Let's kick things off with the midterm elections. A night so disappointing for Republicans, Mitch McConnell is flying his jowls at half-mast. <laughs> As of right now, there are several big races that are still too close to call. For instance, will Republican Adam Laxalt hold on to his lead in the Nevada Senate race? Will Lauren Boebert sleek, squeak one out in Colorado? Will election denier Carrie Lake accept the results if she loses the Arizona governor's race? Or will she try to hang whoever Arizona's Mike Pence is? Nobody knows. <laughs> And one reason it's so hard to predict the results is that Americans cast ballots in so many different ways. And they all come in differently and separately, right? right? Democrats tend to vote early by mail or Dropbox. Republicans show up on election day or use military ballots. And Herschel Walker <laughs> votes the way he fathers his children, absentee. <laughs> but there is one unfinished race that's not all that close, and it's a real trip. We are still watching Proposition 122, which appears likely to pass, and if it does, Colorado would essentially legalize psychedelic mushrooms. Passing the proposition would decriminalize personal possession right away, and then it would allow licensed medical facilities to administer the natural medicine starting in 2024. Yeah, that's right. After being one of the first states to legalize marijuana, Colorado is now one of the first states to legalize mushrooms. And I think it's great. I think it is. Yeah, because of creating, like, a... Instead of creating a drug underworld, Colorado's bringing everything out into the open, you know? You can legalize it, you can regulate it. It's like those parents who give their kids wine with dinner, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'd rather they be drunk in front of me because it's safer, <laughs> and also it's funny to watch them bumping into things. Go, look at you, Tyler. <laughs> and I know right now, I know right now there's some people seeing this law going into effect and they're panicking, they're like, shrooms? Who are gonna be legal? What? And I'm like, but hey, hey, just relax, relax. <laughs> Breathe. You're gonna be just fine. <laughs> just drink more water <laughs> and listen to some Enya, okay? Enya, Enya, Enya. That's a weird name. I'm freaking out again. Ah! <laughs> but personally, I'm all for drug laws getting less restrictive. And if they do officially legalize shrooms, I'm also excited for their next ballot measure. Why are my hands so big? <laughs> now, if we had more time, we could talk about whether the acceptance of recreational drug use can lead to increased understanding of the ther therapeutic value of psychedelics, or how weird it is that drugs are like the one illegal thing we get to vote on to make legal, you know? Like, why don't we legalize jaywalking, or even better, jay driving? Why do the pedestrians have the sidewalks all to themselves, huh? <laughs> but we don't have the time for any of that, because while the U.S. is abandoning the war on drugs, Ukraine is still fighting its war with Russia. And its leader just got some really strange military assistance. The actor Sean Penn, most often doing the unpredictable, he did it again this time, loaning his Oscar to the president of Ukraine. But it comes with a condition. Video posted online shows Penn handing the Oscar to Ukrainian President Zelensky. He said Zelensky can keep it until Ukraine wins the war against Russia. Penn has visited Ukraine several times since the fighting began last February. If I know this is here with you, then I'll, then I'll feel better and stronger for the fight. It's so great, great honor, but, yeah. but until we will. When you, when you win, bring it back to Malibu. Correct. Yes. Great. Okay. I don't even know how to process <laughs> this information. Am, am I on mushrooms? Is, <laughs> is it happening already? Like, like, I really, I don't get it. How does the Oscar help Zelensky fight the war? <laughs> is he supposed to use it as a weapon? Is, I mean, if that's the case, at least give him two so he can use them like nunchucks, like on a chain, <laughs> you know? And it would be strange enough if he just gave him an Oscar to help win the war, but he wants Zelensky to return it? <laughs> that was the weird part for me. He's like, make sure you bring this back to me. That's a lot of responsibility. The man is already running a war against Russia. Now he's got to make sure that nothing happens to Sean Penn's Oscar. <laughs> it's like air raid sirens are going off. They're like, quickly, sir, quickly, everyone get to the bunker. He's like, I'm coming. I just need to find Sean Penn's Oscar. <laughs> ah, ah, he needs it back. He needs it back. <laughs> the only way I think this could work is if Zelensky gave the Oscar to Putin, and then while Putin gave the acceptance speech, the, the music just played him off, and then he had to leave Ukraine. <laughs> oh, wait. I wasn't finished. Okay, good night. Goodbye, everybody. I actually hope that Zelensky is a fan of Sean Penn's movies. Because we don't know what else happened there. It, it might have gotten really awkward. You know? Sean Penn is like, here, 
I want you to have my best actor Oscar for Milk. <laughs> yes, yes, one of my favorite films. I... <laughs> I remember watching it and thinking, wow, that is a lot of milk. <laughs> no way you can drink all that milk. <laughs> Powerful story. <laughs> Now, if we had more time, we could talk about the other major development in the war, which is that Russia was just forced into another embarrassing retreat from a major Ukrainian city, probably because they heard Ukraine has Sean Penn's Oscar now. But we don't have the time for that, because right now, the one thing being mismanaged worse than Putin's war is Elon Musk's websites. Well, Twitter has officially debuted its verified blue check marks, and the feature is already causing a lot of confusion. Subscribers who pay the $8 monthly fee are now entitled to some additional perks, namely the blue check mark previously reserved for verified accounts. The problem is some of those users are using their newly acquired verification to impersonate celebrities and other public figures. Someone pretending to be LeBron James tweeted, I am officially requesting a trade from the Lakers. An account that appeared to be from the pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly announced that all insulin would now be free. Meanwhile, a user impersonating George W. Bush declared, I miss killing Iraqis. And a fake account for Nintendo simply tweeted a picture of Mom Mario giving the finger. Oh no! Because anyone can buy verification, they're now impersonating famous people. Who could have seen this coming? <laughs> what? Everyone? Wow! Where were you guys 44 billion dollars ago? <laughs> Look, I'm gonna be honest and I'm gonna be blunt here. Elon Musk is running Twitter into the ground. And it's the best Twitter's ever been. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Huh? Fake LeBron leaving LA, Mario flipping the bird, huh? George Bush telling us how he really feels. The thing is an absolute train wreck, and I'm here for it. <laughs> the only reason we know that that wasn't the real Mario was because Mario would never flip someone the bird. He's Italian. Come on. Yeah, he'd probably do this, right? <laughs> or this. He's like, hey, Cooper, tell your mother I said hello, huh? <laughs> But who knows, who knows? Maybe all of this verified, real, fake people on Twitter chaos is actually part of Elon's plan. Yeah, maybe this is what he's doing on purpose. Soon no one will know a real account from a fake account. And then he'll be like, guys, did you see someone impersonated me and spent $44 billion on Twitter? That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just gonna take my money and be on my way. Okay, bye-bye now, bye-bye. <laughs> now, if we had the time, we could discuss how this verified fiasco isn't just hurting Twitter, it's also damaging Tesla's stock. Or we could definitely talk about how Rihanna just said on Twitter that she wanted me to perform with her at the Super Bowl. And no, it's not a fake account because she even asked for my social security number. <laughs> but we don't have the time for any of that because while Twitter is faking celebrities, a real celebrity is in trouble for faking his life. Vogue is suing rappers Drake and 21 Savage for using a fake cover story to promote their new album, Her Loss. So back in October, Drake shared what appeared to be a Vogue magazine cover featuring himself and 21 Savage with the caption, me and my brother on the newsstand tomorrow, thanking Vogue editors for their support. Well, apparently they did not like this because mm -hmm. the publishers, they filed a complaint in federal court this week saying the stunt was an infringement of the company's trademark. So far, no comment on the lawsuit from Drake or 21 Savage. Yeah. That's right, Vogue is suing Drake and 21 Savage for $4 million for photoshopping themselves onto the cover of the magazine. <laughs> Which, to be honest, I don't know if Vogue has a case here. You can clearly tell that this was a fake cover. I mean, Vogue lighting black people properly? This is clearly not real. <laughs> well, no, it's parody. But the beef is very real. The biggest name in magazines is going up against the biggest name in hip-hop. That's no joke. This hasn't happened since Tupac got shot by Reader's Digest. That shit was no game. <laughs> now, just for context, this Vogue cover wasn't the only fake promotion Drake and 21 Savage have been doing, right? He also released a, a fake interview with Howard Stern, a fake SNL performance, a fake appearance on NPR, like Tiny Desk, which is a little weird because he's Drake. He doesn't have to fake any of these things, you know? <laughs> It's so weird to me, it's like, Drake, if you wanna be on NPR, I'm pretty sure you can be on NPR. <laughs> this would be like Obama photoshopping himself at a Buffalo Wild Wings, you know? <laughs> it's just like, oh, look, Michelle, it almost looks like I was actually there. How cool would that be? <laughs> oh man, you're the president, you can go to a Buffalo Wild Wings. 